Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the goodness of God, and last time we discussed how we know that eternity isn't linear like time. This time, how can we know that God is eternal? We've gone over a couple of reasons to think that God is eternal already, his unchanging nature, his transcendence over time, and his perfection, which makes it impossible for him to exist in a state as flawed as linear time, are just a few of the reasons to think that God is eternal. However, it's more than just being eternal. Because only God is unchanging, as we recently covered, only God is truly eternal in this sense, and only God ever will be. Because of this, there are a few new things that we can learn about God and eternity. For one thing, it means that being truly eternal is bound up with the nature of God, to the point where God himself is all of eternity. Because of this, we can confirm what we discovered way back in episode 238, that the eternal life experienced by the saints in heaven isn't like the kind that God experiences, because unlike God, each of the saints had a beginning. There is, however, one argument that can be made against this view based on the scriptures, which refer to God in the present, past, and future tense frequently. However, being non-linear, eternity doesn't have a present, past, or future. So how can the scriptures be true if they refer to him in this way? The answer lies in one often overlooked aspect of eternity. It is larger, not smaller, than time. A truly eternal being is not bound to any one time period and isn't changed through time or even forced along time in a linear direction like we are. However, instead of not being present at any point in time, God encompasses all of them and more besides, taking them all simultaneously. So even though God is not restricted to any moment in time, it's not false to use temporal terms to describe things that he does in the past present or future. So in the end, I think there's a lot that we can learn about God's eternal nature, and there are plenty of good reasons to think that he's eternal in a truly transcendent way. Next time, can we know for sure that there's only one God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.